I know we start like uh, all the levels always start really with a meme from content and coming from a story place on where we're going to go and what it's going to look like. We don't so much do an inside cover pass yet. What we do is maximum play space. We know this arena will be 40 meters, this one will be 30. We build out that gray box to make sure it technically works in terms of loading and performance. And we start to hand the gray box off. And there's a bit of a give and take there. Yeah, I'd have to say one of the biggest challenges with some of these areas was figuring out the intentions of gray boxes, uh, knowing whether something was a sideline blocker or if it was an intentional uh, obstacle to go around. I guess throwing back to these little metric men, explain what they are everywhere, is they represent the uh, player and a lot of rings around him, like distance rings for combat, especially the most common arena sizes. And this makes it really easy for us in the editor to throw a guy down and have a space around him and see, because we already know what feels good on, on each one. Where I've worked previously, we wouldn't do play tests till the end, mm -hmm. till we've already put all the final art in, final cinemas, everything. At which point it's incredibly expensive to go back and try to change anything. Yeah, exactly. It almost makes it not worth the time or effort, but then people fall in love with stuff at that it, point. Yeah. yeah. They don't, they're like, no, I put that there. We put the concept into the gray box, which helps the entire team because now the artists coming in or anyone playing it can kind of start to see what the room visually is going to look like. The, the black and white that you see, it's a quick idea to give them something to more clearly art box. And if people are getting what's supposed to happen in these spaces in a gray box form, then generally it's pretty much a win once art comes in and makes it look pretty. I'll kiss that and run with it. Uh, so basically, you know, we get the art team gets the gray box. You know, it's been play tested. We've had a concept run through it. We have us a great idea of what we can do with the space. And then something that we do that's a little bit different, we take the gray box from design and then we do what we call an art box pass on that so that we can um, do a real basic modeling pass to see how our modular environments fit together and see the environment as a whole before we put time into UVing and texturing and finalizing shaders and these types of things. Kind of get silhouettes of the environment, see how everything works together as a whole in the environment rather than taking a bunch of finished uh, pieces from a bunch of different people and kind of slapping them together and kind of hoping that it all ties together. From a design standpoint, it helps immensely because you're giving me a really detailed collision pass mm -hmm. before we even go into, like you said, putting all the effort into the art resources themselves. It also helps out the guys in other departments where like particle effects can come through and while we're still art boxing, they can start laying down those waterfalls and particle effects and they know they have a pretty good idea, you know, where the splash points are gonna be and things like that. Things might need a little bits of polish and little things here and there, but for the most part, uh, you know, we've alleviated some of the headache of, of you know, um, over arting before it's time. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of depth. I mean, especially from the content side. Like, again, like the comic book detailed a lot of what happened, and then they know a lot of what happened, like with the history of all these ruins. When you're concepting, you actually build it in a photographic kind of manner. You, know, you use the rule of thirds, you identify points of interest within the image, and we try to do that in the environment art, right? just in the scene in general. We try to make the 3D scene reflect kind of the composition uh, of the concept art. Playtesting and direct feedback is probably the other half of, you know, how design dictates a, a map should should play out. And seeing people play and seeing someone get lost in a dark corner, it's easy to drop in a bright light to call attention to where they need to go, but to do it in an artistically tasteful way is, is kind of the hard part. But it's also the most fun element of it. You have to rely on the people around you to you know, you know, extrapolate what you've done and really see it because as long as you give them enough to work from, the end result, you know, speaks for itself.